everyone, welcome back to Super Scientists and welcome to today's free, fun and practical science activities for you to do. Um, I just wonder today if you notice something different because a few times I've done this now. Do you notice a different science t-shirt and do you notice a different science picture on the wall behind me which I have painted all of these different pictures myself. Uh, keep an eye out for a different one um, every few times or well, it depends how often I get to paint them really. But anyway, uh, keep your eye out for them and see if you can notice them and message me when you notice them because that will be good if you're on the ball. So today's science lesson then is on air pressure. And we're going to do a series of air pressure experiments that you can do at home and hopefully you will enjoy these. So for key stage one, we're going to look at stabbing a potato with a straw. I know it sounds... Um, Bad, but it's not as really good, it's good fun. Uh, key stage two, we're going to look at turning the glass of water upside down without losing any of the water and we're going to do a marshmallow experiment. Key stage three, we're going to look at getting an egg into a conical flask without pushing it in. And key stage four, we're going to look at brownie in motion, which is in the GCSE curriculum. So let's have a little talk about what air pressure is initially. And we'll talk about how air pressure are just particles um, in the air that are hitting us all the time and we don't feel them. The actual air pressure is the force of those particles um, hitting a surface. Um, so you might like to think of it as um, air particles uh, forcing the um, tyre to remain inflated in a car or you could think of it as the air particles in a football that are used pushing out to keep the ball inflated and you could even think of it as air pressure keeping um, a tyre pumped up on a bike, for example, acting in the same way. Um, we also talk about air pressure as scientists when we're talking about weather. You've probably heard it on the news in the weather forecast after the news when they talk about high pressure and low pressure. Um, when we refer to air pressure and weather, if we think about um, an increase or a high air pressure, we think of the weather as being quite dry and settled. And if we think about low air pressure, we think about a cloudy, unsettled type of weather. So that's a little bit about pressure, more now about practical activities. So let's have a go at number one for key stage one, two and three and four. You can all have a go at this. I'd like you to think about being able to stab a piece of fruit or an apple, an orange um, with a peel still on or a potato with a straw. If you try and do it just by holding the straw like this and stab the potato, what happens is the, um, the straw will be forced upwards and not into the vegetable or the fruit. So I'll show you that again. What happens is my finger and my thumb just move down the straw and it didn't go or penetrate in. And the same will happen if I do it with the orange. If you watch carefully, it just moves down and doesn't go in. We are going to increase the pressure in the straw by placing our thumb over the end of the straw. And what we're going to do now is we're going to um, compress and force all the air inside the straw so it should go into the potato. Are you ready? One, two, three, go. Oh, missed it. Let's try that again. One, two, three, go. Straight in. Just went straight into the potato. That's great, isn't it? Would have been better if it had happened the first time instead of me missing the potato. But there you go, I'm only human. Uh, let's try it again. So thing, um, thumb over the end of the straw. I'm deliberately holding it like that. So you can see that rather than going like that, that I'm not pushing on the straw because I don't want you to think I'm cheating on this because I'm not. So I'm just going to put my finger around the top and my thumb over the end so that you can see I'm not applying a huge amount of force. And, and this time, hopefully, I'm not going to miss first time. I'm going to go for the orange. One, two, three. Oh, missed it. <laughs> that's terrible, isn't it? I'm going to put the potato down and I'm going to do it again. At least you can all laugh at me. That's fine. I don't mind, but I haven't got a problem with that. One, two, three, go. Oh, I'm going to hold it properly. Here we go. One, I've got my finger over the end of it now. One, two, three, go. There we go, that's better. <laughs> you do have to make sure that you hold the orange tight, otherwise it slips like I did. Or 
um, you just end up missing it. You've got to concentrate. Perhaps I should have put my glasses on. That would have been better because I'm getting a bit old now. Okay, so I'm going to put these down. Um, so key stage one, I'd like to have a go at that because straws are not dangerous. You can use paper ones as well. If you've got paper straws, that's fine. That's the last plastic straw in my household. Um, we don't, because they don't tend to make them anymore. That's fine. But you can use a paper straw. It does work. Uh, okay, key stage one, I'd like you to go um, now and have a go at that activity and uh, make sure you take a picture or a video of you doing it and tag me as you have done in the past um, on Facebook, on Twitter, or you can um, reply to me on here and show me on YouTube um, or you can email me pictures at escapegreen at superscientist.co.uk. Thank you very much. Okay, don't forget also to have a look at my shop in the description so that you could have a look at little £1 practical activities that you might want to do at home because that would be great too. Okay, stage two, I'm going to give you a couple of other activities that I would like you to have a go at to do with air pressure. I'm going to start off by just um, having a glass of water. I've got a conical flask here with some water in it and I'm going to fill up my glass of water. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it up all the way to the top so it's almost overflowing. Can you see that? It's completely full. In fact, it is overflowing and that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a piece of card that I've got on my tray here like that. I'm going to hold it in my teeth because I've only got one pair of hands. I'm just going to make sure. It's completely full. Let's write down again. And I'm going to take my piece of card and I'm going to place it over the top of my glass of water. Now, make sure that you do this somewhere safe um, and make sure that your mum or dad is not lying on the floor underneath you because this would be quite funny if it didn't work. You're going to turn this card upside down. Okay, and then if we've done it right, and we've um, got greater pressure on the outside, it should hold the card in place when we let go of it like that. And you should be able to move this over the top of somebody's head um, and it shouldn't come away. And it, you just indicate that the air pressure is greater on the outside, which is holding the card in place. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold it underneath while I turn it back upside down and use, use a few drops of it. I'm gonna place it back down again. You will amaze everybody with that experiment if you do it right. But you have to make sure that you fill the uh, glass up right to the top so it's almost overflowing um, so that you can basically get a good seal on your card and your glass. OK, so I'm going to put that down. I'm also going to show you another experiment here that you could try if you have a syringe. And I've got a little marshmallow inside my syringe. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the pressure inside my gas syringe by pulling on the syringe, but having my thumb over the end. And as I do that, all of the air that is inside the marshmallow is going to expand. So the marshmallow should get bigger and hopefully you can see that. I'll do it again. You, do you see it shrink instantly then when I let go of it? I'm going to do it again. I'm going to hold it a little bit closer so you can see and move my fingers out of the way. So I've got my thumb over the end. There we go. Did you see the marshmallow increase? I'm going to let go of it and you should see it reduce. There you go. That's a really cool experiment that you can try at home as well if you've got one of these. Sometimes you get the little medicine syringes inside the um, cowpaw and the Nurofen that you get for babies and children, it will work inside there as well. If you've got normal sized marshmallows, which is actually what I had, I just used a pair of scissors and I cut the marshmallow and then placed it inside my syringe by taking the end off like that. And you can just see that the marshmallow will come out again. So, but that's a pretty cool experiment to show people. So I'm gonna put that one down. Okay, so that is key stage one and key stage two. Um, you can now download the worksheet that is attached in the description so you can have a go at those and that should take you up to half an hour of um, science fun today. OK, 
Key stage three, we're going to try another activity which you can try at home. I'm going to move a chair forward for this one, or in fact, I might just do it. I might just do it on the table here so you can see it. I'm just going to move it down like that so you can see the table. Let's move Einstein back out of the way. There you go, Einstein. You sit over there and watch this experiment. Hopefully, it won't go wrong like the last one did. I'm going to tip this water away in here because I don't need it anymore. So I'm going to use this next experiment. I've got a hard boiled egg here and you can do that at home, just hard boil it and peel it. And um, I've got a conical flask. You probably don't all have one of these at home and that's fine. I had a little glass jar. As long as the neck or the top is smaller than the egg so that it will sit on top like that. It doesn't really matter what container you use. You might have a small glass at home as well. That will also work. Um, we'll, shall we do it on this one and see if we can get it to work on there? Like that. So you can see that the egg is much bigger than the neck of the glass jar. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use a piece of paper which I've got here, and we're going to set light to it. And then we're going to put the piece of paper inside the glass jar, and we're going to watch what happens to the egg. So I'm just going to light a match so that I can set fire to this piece of paper and I'll place it inside the glass jar. And then, oh, look at that! That's pretty amazing, isn't it? The rest of this egg is left on top, but look, let's move that out of the way. Look what happened to the egg. Did it get sucked into the jar? Have a think about it. The actual air pressure was greater on the outside and it pushed the egg in. It didn't suck it in. So that's a pretty cool experiment. Maybe you could try that at home too. Move the egg out of the way here. Okay. So that is key stage one, key stage two, and key stage three on the different activities and practical activities that you can do with air pressure. We're now going to have a look at key stage four and Brownian motion. So key stage four, looking at Brownian motion then. Let's move this around so you can see it. Brownian motion is the random movement of tiny particles in a liquid and it was named after a botanist called Robert Brown. He observed some pollen grains that were in water under a microscope and they tended to move in a haphazard fashion and it puzzled scientists as to why the pollen grains were moving in this haphazard fashion. Um, until they came up with the kinetic theory of matter. So here is an exam question for you to have a look at. If the temperature of gas in a sealed container is increased, what happens to the pressure? And that's worth three marks. So let's think about it. If the temperature of the gas in a sealed container is increased, what happens to the pressure? We need to think about three things. So let's move this around here so that you can see it. And I'll come on the other side so that you can watch me writing so we can get three points in. So first of all, we know that temperature increases a reaction and it increases the particle movement. So we need to say that the molecules move faster. So we'll write that here. Molecules move faster. If they move faster, that means that they're going to be hitting the surface with more force. So we can put that hitting surface more force. That's one mark. Tick one mark. Second mark. The number of impacts per second is therefore going to increase on the surface of the container. So here's our next point. The number, N-O with a dot underneath, is an abbreviation for number. So the number of impacts per second
So the number of impacts per second increases. And then finally, to get the last mark, we need to say that the total force of impacts increases because what we're saying is the molecules move faster, they hit the surface more force, therefore there are more impacts. So overall, the total force increases and that gives us our three marks. Let's write that properly, there we go. One, two, three. Great. I hope you enjoyed that today and that is all about air pressure and I hope to see you tomorrow for the next fun, practical, free science lesson. Okay, thanks then. Bye bye.